Welcome back to Uncensored, Dr. Gabor Mate is still with me. Uh, Dr. Mate, I want to talk to you about something else now, uh, which made you sort of globally uh, brought to the world's attention earlier this year, when you sat down with Prince Harry to talk about his book, Spare. And he got a lot of attention this. I just wondered, you've expressed since then, regret really that you ever did it. Uh, why do you feel that way? I express regret not about the uh, having done the interview, but the way I agreed that it would be um, conducted. What I mean by that is I had a strong sense that this should, interview should be free for everybody. It should be a service to the public. It was a great discussion. I really enjoyed meeting Harry. I found him to be humble and sincere and genuinely interested in promoting mental health and looking at the trauma that underlies people's mental health issues. What was wrong with it is that it was put behind a paywall. So a lot of people, people had to buy his book in order to watch the interview. A lot of four million people already had. They were excluded from watching the interview. And so that's what I regretted. I did not regret doing the interview. I enjoyed it. And I thought it was a really good discussion between two people, two flawed people who were willing to look at their flaws. So I, um, I'm glad I did it. But in retrospect, I would not agree to it right. unless it was aired freely for the whole world to see. Harry felt the same way, by the way, afterwards. We both wanted it released, but the lawyer said that since it was marketed as a pay-for viewing one-time event, we'd be slapped with a clash action suit if we released it. So unfortunately, a lot of people didn't see it. Those who did, I for play. the most part... I want to play. A lot of let me let me play a clip from the interview you conducted. I'll come back to you after this. And then at some point you say towards the end of the book, when is someone in this family going to break free and live? Mm -hmm. Have you done that? I have now. Yeah. Um, what does it feel like? It was great. <laughs> I do. I, I mean, once the book came out, I felt I felt incredibly free. I mm -hmm. felt a huge weight off my shoulders. Now, we have very different views about Prince Harry. I laid my cards on the table. I, I think he's behaved disgracefully towards his family, particularly when Prince Philip was dying, and then the Queen was dying, the family was in grief, and all he and his wife Meghan seem to have done to me is uh, chuck flames at the family from abroad and tried to damage them and the institution of the monarchy. Uh, but it's interesting that he believed there and I recognise you feel differently, that he believed there that he's found freedom. But in all your experience of talking to people through, you know, similar kind of family trauma, if you like, can you really find happiness if your freedom involves disconnecting yourself from your entire family? Well, <laughs> it's a really good question. My eldest son and I, Daniel, with whom... I wrote our book, The Myth of Normal, Trauma, Illness, and Healing in a Toxic Culture, are writing a new book now. It's called Hello Again, a fresh start for parents and their adult children. Families are tough. Families hurt each other. Children are traumatized in families. Harry was traumatized in his family, not because his parents didn't love him, but because they were carrying their own trauma and passing it on to the next generation. I passed on my trauma to my children. I didn't mean to, but I did. And so sometimes people can work these things out if there's the willingness on both sides. And people do make mistakes. And I do believe Harry made some mistakes. Um, that goes both ways. Um, people can work it out, and sometimes they can't. And sometimes people find freedom in having to disconnect. In, in the book, The Myth of Normal, I talk about this tension that we all have between authentic and belonging, attachment and authenticity. If we can belong and connect and be our true selves, that's ideal. But what do we do if in order to be our true selves, our families or our communities won't accept us? Well, for example, over this Israel issue, I made a decision a long time ago that for me, speaking the truth, which doesn't make me right, but speaking my truth is more important than who likes me and who doesn't like me. In 1967, I wrote an article after the war, arguing by that time that Israel had occupied these territories quite deliberately and then never give them back. 
my father kicked me out of the house. I accepted that. Now, my father later on came around and actually agreed with me. But I made the decision that to be myself and to speak my truth, I'm willing to break the contact if that's what it took. A lot of people in that situation, and, and Harry in that family with a very troubled young mother and a loveless marriage, and a father who was having an affair before he was born, a family that was not a whole lot of tethering and holding. There's multiple reasons to say that he was a very traumatized child, and in order to become himself, he had to distance himself. Now, did he do it right, exactly the ideal way? Maybe not, but you know what? When I look at myself at age 38 or 35, boy, did I make a lot of mistakes. <laughs> so this is all part of the human drama. Yeah. And families sometimes work it out, yeah. sometimes they don't. It's true. It's very true. Dr. Marty, I've got to leave it there. It's been fascinating. Please come back on the show again another time. I've really enjoyed talking to you.